Hi all, welcome to Sidza.com. Here in this video we will learn about the solubility of uh, gases in liquids. We know that gas uh, can be dissolved, can be soluble in, the, in any particular liquid and the solubility of any gas in a given liquid depends on certain factors, right? Number one is uh, temperature, second is pressure of the gas and the third one is the nature of the gas and the nature of the solvent, right? So these are the three important factors on which the solubility of a gas depends. So number one factor here is the temperature. In general, we say that the solubility of a gas, it decreases with the increase in temperature. That means at a lower temperature, you know, if you have a very, very low temperature, more gas will be soluble, right? More gas will be soluble in the liquid. But if you increase the temperature, right? If you increase the temperature, so that means at a higher temperature, less gas molecules, you know, are soluble in the liquid. So the solubility of the gas is inversely proportional to the temperature. So the graph of the solubility versus solubility here versus the temperature will be like this. So if you increase the temperature, solubility of the gas decreases. This is exactly what you find in the thermal pollution, right? In the thermal pollution. The aquatic animals, we know they use uh, the dissolved, the oxygen there, the molecular oxygen there. You know, the animals like fishes, which are there in the water bodies, they use this dissolved oxygen for their respiration. And when the temperature of the atmosphere increases, the solubility of this oxygen in the water decreases. And that's what, you know, we feel, we call as a thermal pollution. Because of the thermal you know, pollution, the availability of the oxygen in the water bodies decreases, which is not good for the aquatic, you know, uh, animals there, aquatic inhabitants there. The second factor on which the solubility of a gas depends is pressure, right? The solubility of the gas increases with the increase in pressure. That means if you increase the pressure, solubility will increase. At lower pressure, suppose at this particular pressure, less amount of the gas is there. But if you increase the pressure here, suppose I'm going to apply some force and so that the pressure inside this, you know, increases. With the increase in the pressure, more gas will enter into the liquid state. That means the solubility of a gas is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas above the surface of the liquid. So mathematically, we can write it like this. The mass, or you can say the solubility of the gas, is directly proportional to the pressure. Pressure of the gas, which is above the surface of the liquid. Here, M is the mass of the gas dissolved per unit volume of the solvent. And P, here this is the pressure of the gas above the surface of the liquid here, right? So if you increase the pressure, so solubility will increase. Or I can write it like this, constant K times P. So if suppose here, the pressure is one atmosphere, right? Then I can say M will be equal to K. This is a constant of proportionality here, right? And what is this, you know, uh, constant K? It actually gives us the magnitude, you know, this K gives us the magnitude of the gas, which is dissolved there in the liquid at one atmospheric pressure. And this K, the magnitude of this K here, it depends on certain, you know, on certain other factors, like it depends on the nature of the gas, that means the scale for the different gases will be different. For carbon dioxide, for nitrogen, for oxygen, it will be different. And for the same gas, it will be different at different temperatures also. It will be different, you know, for the different solvents also. Correct? So that means the scale depends on certain things, certain factors, right? Number one, it depends on the nature of the gas. It depends on the temperature of the, you know, the, of the liquid. And it depends on the nature of the solvent also. So as we discussed that with the increase in the pressure, more gas will enter into the liquid. That means if I try to plot a graph between the pressure of the gas and the solubility, 
right? The graph, graph, you know, it will look like this, okay? By increasing the pressure, the solubility increases, right? So at higher pressure, you have more solubility. And for different gases, it will be different. The slope here will be different. It will not be same for all the gases. Suppose like this. These are the two graphs here for the two different gases. This is for the oxygen and this is for the nitrogen. Which means that the solubility of the oxygen in water here is more than the solubility of the nitrogen. Which means that the oxygen here is more soluble than the nitrogen. Because you can see here, you know, the change for the nitrogen and the change for oxygen. Quite different, right? So the solubility at any particular pressure, suppose at this particular pressure for the nitrogen is quite less and at the same pressure for the oxygen it is more. That means the solubility of a gas also depends on the nature of a, it depends on the nature of the gas. Generally, you know, when we say nature of a gas, it actually depends on the you know, the ease of liquefaction, the gases which you can easily liquefy are more soluble. So that means here, you know, uh, the oxygen gas is more easily liquefiable. So you can convert the oxygen gas into liquid state much easier than the nitrogen. Suppose if M1 is the mass of the gas, or you can see the solubility of the gas uh, that you see at the pressure P1. For the same gas, you can find the solubility at another pressure. By the equation, M1 by M2 will be equal to P1 by P2. Right? So M1 by M2, this is the solubility of the gas at the pressure P1, right? M2 is the solubility of the gas at the pressure P2. You can just see here, right? We know the slope, we know this, you know, this is just like a, a linear equation, right? You get a linear equation. So therefore, you can find the solubility of a gas at any other pressure. Now, what if you have a, a gaseous mixture? Suppose if I have a gaseous mixture above the surface of the liquid. Suppose I got two gases, the gas A and the gas B. We have a mixture of a gas. And we, have, we know that from the Dalton's law of partial pressure, we use actually for the, for the gaseous mixtures, we use the term partial pressure. Right? So partial pressure of A and we use the term partial pressure of B. So partial pressure of A is actually the pressure exerted by the A molecules, right? And the partial pressure of B is actually the pressure exerted by the B molecules. So the total pressure of the gas will be the partial pressure of A uh, plus the partial pressure of B. That's what we have learned actually in the gaseous state. Now, if you have a gaseous mixture, right? Suppose you have two different gases there, A and the B, both will be soluble, right, in the liquid, but the extent of solubility is different, right? Extent of solubility is different. And here, according to Henry's law, right? So we use here the Henry's law. So according to the Henry's law, it says that the solubility of the gas, you know, how much is this soluble there? Suppose the gas A, how much is, is, is soluble there? It depends on the partial pressure of the, it depends on the partial pressure of that particular gas. Correct? So let me express the solubility here, solubility of the gas in terms of mole fraction, right? So if I express the solubility in terms of a mole fraction, so therefore I can state the Henry's law like this. I can say that the solubility, according to Henry's law, the solubility, which here I'm going to express in terms of mole fraction. So I can say the mole fraction of the gas, right, in the solution is directly proportional to this partial pressure, right? So I can say the mole fraction of a gas, X, right, which is actually the solubility, right, depends on the partial pressure. It's not the total pressure, right? Remember, this is not the total pressure. This is the partial pressure. So I'm going to, I can write it like this, you know, uh, XA and which is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the A here. And similarly, I can say here, uh, the solubility or the mole fraction of the B in the solution depends on the partial pressure of the B. In general, I can say the, you know, the solubility or the mole fraction of a gas in the liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of that gas. Correct? While X here is the mole fraction of the gas in solution 
and here P is the partial pressure of the gas. And again, I can use the proportionality constant there, K dash here, and P, right? Or I can write it, you know, the partial pressure of a gas will be equal to 1 by K dash here times X. Or I can also write it like this, you know, the partial pressure of a gas will be equal to another constant which is called the Henry's constant times X, right? This is the equation that you need here. So here KH is what? It is called as the Henry's constant, Henry's uh, law constant, right? And this Henry's law constant is different for the different gases. And even for the same gas, it will be different at different temperatures. As you can see here, the Henry's, constant, Henry's law constant is different for the different gases. Suppose you can check for the helium and the hydrogen, right? At the same temperature, for, hi for hydrogen it is less and for helium it's more. Remember, this Henry's constant, you can see from here, it will be inversely proportional to the solubility, isn't it? You know, this Henry's constant KH is inversely proportional to the solubility. I can write it like this also, you know, the so solubility will be equal to P by Henry's constant, right? So it is inversely proportional. That means higher the uh, Henry's constant, lesser will be the solubility. At the same temperature, helium and hydrogen, hydrogen has a lower, you know, this Henry's law constant. That means it is more soluble. Hydrogen is more soluble than helium at the same temperature, correct? And even you can just check for the same gas at two different temperatures. At lower temperature, the, the Henry's constant is less, which means Nitrogen at lower temperature is more soluble, right? Because if the Henry's law constant is less, it means it's more soluble. So here at 293 and 303, we have a different Henry's law constant. At lower temperature, it is more soluble. And at high temperature, it is less soluble. Henry's law holds good only if the following three conditions are fulfilled. Number one is the pressure is not too high. Okay, and the second point is the temperature is not very low. And the third one, very important one, the gas does not react chemically with the solvent. You know, if this condition occurs there, we cannot apply the Henry's law, right? Like suppose you can take an example of ammonia. We know that if you take an ammonia gas and dissolve in the water, it reacts with the water and it forms ammonium hydroxide there. So when a particular gas reacts with the solvent, its solubility abnormally increases, right? That's why ammonia is very much, you know, it's highly soluble there in the water. So that's why the Henry's law doesn't hold good here, you know, uh, for, the, for, for, for the ammonia in the water. Because the ammonia gas reacts with the solvent here. And that's why when a particular gas reacts with the solvent, its solubility increases many times. The solubility does not increase as per the Henry's law that we have learned that, you know, the partial pressure of the gas is equal to the Henry's law constant times X. So it's not like this. Rather, the solubility increases, you know, drastically. You know, solubility is very much higher for those gases which react with the solvent. Similarly, you can take an example of a carbon dioxide. In water also it reacts and it forms carbonic acid, right? H2CO3. So that's why, you know, those gases which react with the solvents, we cannot apply the Henry's law for them. Hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.